enjoy fear, all kinds of love and affection here in this world. Then what is the need going there and knowing people? And what is the meaning of people? Krishna, what will happen? 
will be suddenly surrounded with wonderful devotees who have such a nice loving relationship with Krishna, with Srimati Radhika, with Sri Gauruchan. And then by their mercy we will see that our life will also become happy. Sri Rotam Das Thakur is saying that Vishaya Chariya Kabe Shuddha Habe Man Kabe Hamahira Bo Sri Vrindavan I want to see that wonderful transcendental abode of Vrindavan where the eternal pastimes between Radha and Krishna are going on which are full of bliss. There is no no defect in that relationship. There is no cheating propensity. And in here in this material world, what is the basic problem with everything which we encounter? The main problem is cheating. People cheat themselves and then they cheat others. And we do that since our birth. So we get conditioned to do that. First of all, <clears throat> we cheat ourselves by identifying ourselves with this material body. The basic misconception about the reality of life. What? That we think that we are this body and then all other further designations, they superimpose themselves on us and then we really, really forget ourselves. We start considering ourselves as females or males of certain country, certain caste, educated, illiterate, expert, not skillful, diseased, happy, healthy, wealthy, poor, so many different situations of this material world then torment us with so much painful conditions. So, Srinodham Das Thakur is saying that when my mind will become pure of all these mundane sense gratifying propensities, then only the responsibility that I can have any chance to have glimpse of the transcendental world. Why? Why he's saying like that? Why he's focusing his prayers particularly for the mind? Because mind is the basic instrument of our entanglement and our liberation in this material world. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita the same same the very point that for those whose mind is friend, what happens? They become liberated from the cycle of birth and death. They really know themselves and they attain the goal of life. But for one whose mind is not controlled, what happens? He simply dictated 24 hours throughout his life with false dictations of his mind. One after another, the mind runs after the sense pleasure and then hopes that now this arrangement will make me happy. This arrangement will bring me all the satisfaction. This arrangement will make me perfect. Everyone has the desire. They want to become perfect. But getting the dictation of uncontrolled mind and following that will never make us really perfect or happy in our life. So, how can we control our mind? If it was something we could do ourselves, then there was no need for Srinathamdas Das Thakur to pray to pray to Nityananda Prabhu or to pray to Gorchanda Prabhu. No, we really cannot control our mind ourselves. Why? Because it's so turbulent and it's so powerful. And the impressions from so many lifetimes that we have been in this material world, they are so much deep pressed that they cannot just go away like this. Unless one receives the mercy of the pure devotee of, of a person whose heart is completely filled with pure love, there is no way that our mind can really be controlled. So that's why Srinathamdas Das Thakur is saying, O Nityananda Prabhu, please be merciful, that only by your mercy, by the mercy of your lotus feet, my mind can really be purified from all this uh, contamination of the modes of material nature. And I can start understanding that, oh, actually, this is a world of dream. In reality, all the gain or loss which I get, all the disrespect or honor which I get in this material world is really has no value at all. It's simply an, a distraction. 
If someone likes me, someone gives me love, someone gives me respect, someone gives me money, I become very happy and I become very friendly with that person. But truly speaking, if that person is not in any way giving us guidance or inspiration to seek, to really seek spiritual life, then it is a simply cheating relationship. And then a person who is giving, who is not respecting me and who is not being loyal to me, in material terms, I become annoyed with that person. So, this happiness and distress, always throughout our life, keeps flipping from one end to another end, one end to another end. And the mind always keeps us engaged how to get rid of this situation and how to be comfortable in another different situation. And when we try to make serious endeavor in spiritual life, still, this mind doesn't leave us. And it continues to bother us because the deep impressions from all those past lifetimes will not go easily. They will take a time. So if we make a regulated schedule, if we take the process seriously and we apply it systematically in our life consistently, then what will happen? Then gradually, by the association of devotees, by hearing Harikatha, by making serious inquiry into the scriptures, trying to know the root cause of our entanglement, that why we got into this situation, the reason is that we forgot Krishna. So, if at every point in my life I make myself, my all arrangements in such a way that I can keep remembering Krishna, and I can keep remembering His devotees, and I can keep remembering about His devotional service, and my true eternal nature, which is simply to be His unalloyed, simple devotee. That's what my life is. If we can make ourselves in such a uh, routine, then gradually, by the power of pure devotional service, by the power of the association of pure devotees of the Lord, gradually this mind will become pure. And then we'll be able to uh, remember Krishna, think about his pastimes, and then what will happen? We'll be able to see the transcendental mode of Sri Vrindavan, where the eternal pastimes of Sri Shuradha and Krishna is going on. And Sri Narottam Das Thakur is praying for that. He's actually telling us the way, the secret, that's what we should be doing to make serious advancement in our spiritual life.
how you have come. It is such a good association. So you should not hear it. Never don't hear it. Try to have fun day by day. Like plants. No? If water is there, air is there, then this plant, daily something, something, and it will be perfect. So I have come only to remind you that really you are not from this world. You are in jail. Really in jail. Pointed by so many desires. You cannot untie your all these things. So, <coughs> I have come to remind you that you are by your transcendental constitutional form you are servant of Krishna, eternal servant of Krishna. Anyhow you have unluckily come to this world. You know that whole time has been divided into four. Eh? Divided into four. What? Shatta Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapa Yuga and Kali Yuga. This is Kali Yuga, like Iron Age, Quarreling Age. Why it has been told Shatta Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapar Yuga and Kali Yuga? Especially Yuga. What is the use of uh, calling Yuga? Yuga means two. What is two? Dharma and Adharma. What is Dharma? Yeah. Religion. Religion and Adharma. Is it good and bad? By which we can be happy forever? It is Dharma. Religion, which shapes up some worldly object, and we can be happy by accepting her, by following her, and a term opposite. In Kaliyum, so much a term. What a term? What is that? so much toxication, self-gratification, cheating others, lying, speaking lies, gambling, even our government gambles. No mercy, mercy is. So be she all kinds of pets is adharma is in this idea. So in all Juk, in four, oh, the two will be there. Dharma, Adharma. So this is Juk. Beginning from Kali, we see that in Kali Yuga, the two are there, Dharma and Adharma. But Adharma is very powerful and gradually we see also that in Shatta Yuga Dharma Adharma, but Dharma is powerful and Adharma is very weak. Understand what I am going to tell. And gradually from Shatta Yuga Dharma will be weak weaker and weakest. Eh? Uh, weakest. And if we come from 
कलियुग इन कलियुग अधर्म इज हाइएस्ट एंड द्वापर समलेश एंड देन त्रेता मोरलेश एंड देन सत्युग मोर नॉमिनेट वट आई एम गोइंग टू टेल वट आई एम टेल Shri Guru Dev is telling that in those four different eras, which we call Yuga, there is always two things: religion and irreligion. And according to the progress of the Yuga, first Yuga is Satya Yuga, second Dwapara Yuga, Treta Yuga, and Kali Yuga, last. Now we are in last Yuga. Of these cycles of four yugas, this will repeat itself all the time. These four cycles. So, in the first yuga, it's such a yuga, religion is prominent, and in religion, is very little, hardly, it is there. In this one fourth, yeah. So, as we progress, second, third, fourth yuga, Kali yuga, hardly any religion is there. And irreligion is so much prominent, which manifests itself by so many kinds of sense gratification, which we are entangled in. So many different kinds of philosophies, which, in the name of religion, only promote sense gratification and mental speculation. So, in this unfortunate age, religion is very difficult to discover. At the same time. I don't want to. The Guru has asked me what he will tell. We will see how one can still become most fortunate in this Kali Yuga. Yeah. We will hear this from Shri Guru. Yeah. Yeah. from the first creation no more you can it may be that at that time we were some insects some worm some grasses here and there so many things. and gradually we have come up to this position so if we will lose this Good opportunity where Guru is so good, very fair, and association is good coming to some point, and a very good body, not so much diseases, very beautiful, very strong, and even Krishna has given all these things, even you have, and not. Advantage of is all these things, situation. Then you are foolish. You are so much unfortunate. Even uh, it is called that that person is like such self killer. So we must be strong, especially from boyhood. We should try to realize all these things and to be associated in good association. Like Pralab, the age of five, two words, the age of five. We see so many. If you are not beginning from boyhood, then if you are mature, after fifty, sixty, you cannot. Very hard. Very hard. So we should write from beginning to chant and to remember Krishna. In Kali Yuga, we see that so many sukhe, which is a 
हैं उसका विश्वास ही प्राप्त हो वेरी इज हियर एंड देयर ऑल एन फॉर्टिंग लस्ट एंड सेंस ग्रेटिफिकेशन इजली वी कैन कलेक्ट एवरी थिंग इन दिस वर्ल्ड सो सम पर्सन दे थिंक दैट बाई इन ज्वाइन इन इन ज्वाइनिंग इन ज्वाइन वी विल बी इन द लास्ट वी विल बी सेटिस्फाइड and thus we will give up and self enjoyment and then we will join hari nay again we had a eh idea idea that there is a cow or any animal who is grazing in a very green park or any bear we think that when let us not disturb her that that animal oh by grazing by taking eating when he will be fully satisfied then he will go away understand but this is not ha huh? not a fact next day when he will be hungry again he will come and daily he will come he will not be satisfied there is a fire and if you are giving some fuel also some oil and a thing which burns very easily like he then or for a hundred and thousand years or it will not be a stop fire will not be satisfied always increasing increasing so lust and all worldly desires and sense gratification if you are going in lust for whole world new new pairs wife and husband or any one so many boyfriend and girlfriend not only one year two year whole life and after life of life for life it will increase you can it there is a story in shrimad bhagavat or madam maharaj will speak about that brief ंगे <laughs> and the lotus feet to me guru dev after that i pay my obeisances to all vishnavas who assembled here to hear hari katha shri guru dev ordered me to discuss about bhagavatam upakkhan where it is mentioned that only by enjoying we could not be happy in simad bhagavatam shri sukadev goswami has narrated one story it is not only story it is a practical fact in ancient time there was a king named yayati he got married with daughter of sukraj 